Hello guys, good day. Welcome to another video lecture in ACC 325, Governance, Business Ethics, Risk Management, and Internal Control. So our topic for this video lecture is the very interesting business ethics. But before we proceed with the discussion proper of business ethics, let us first strengthen our foundation with the concept of general ethics. So when we talk about ethics, the term ethics can commonly refer to the rules and principles that define right and wrong conduct of an individual. So there is a specific code of conduct that will determine whether an action of an individual is morally right or morally wrong or whether it is ethically good or not. Ethical behavior is accepted as right or good in the context of a governing moral code. Thus, ethics can be viewed as a way of behaving that can be that can be prescribed and imposed by a particular work environment. Ethics is also called as moral philosophy, the discipline concerning with what is morally good and bad and morally right and wrong. Ethics refers also to well-founded standards of right and wrong that prescribe what humans ought to do, usually in terms of rights, obligations, benefits to society, fairness, or specific virtues. Thus, ethics relates to the standards of conduct and moral judgments that differentiate right from wrong. Ethics is not a natural science but a creation of the human mind for this reason, it is considered as relative, meaning ethics is not absolute and is open to the influence of time, place, and situation. There are circumstances where a particular act might be morally right or good or ethically right or good depending on the situation, place, or time where the act was enacted. All right. So there is this specific code of conduct regulation or standards that is to be followed before someone can be considered as morally right or good. So to relate that general concept into ethics or business ethics, so business ethics is just a um, specific concept of your ethics where business ethics is just simply the ethical moral principles and challenges that arise in a business environment all right so standards and practices in a workplace settings so that means um, business ethics still relates to the rules and principles that defines right and wrong conduct of an individual, but this time it is um, specifically placed on a working environment. So therefore, um, your actions will be judged whether it is ethically or morally good or not based on a workplace settings. All right. So some of the areas related with and not limited to Business ethics include the following. So these are the interesting na mga topics which can be related to business ethics. For example, in the field of finance and accounting, we have this so-called creative accounting, earnings management, financial analysis, insider trading, securities fraud, facilitation payment, and for human resource management, we have the executive compensation, affirmative action, workplace surveillance, whistleblowing, occupational safety and health, indentured servitude, union busting, sexual harassment, and employee raiding. In terms of sales and marketing, we also have price fixing, price determination or price discrimination, greenwashing, spamming, using addictive messages or images in advertising, marketing to children, false advertising, or negative campaigning. So these are um, some but not limited to topics which are related to business ethics. It only means, guys, that um, when you do a particular action outside work, 
And if you do that specific, the same action inside your workplace, there could be um, a different effect. Whether, for example, you usually go on late, go late on your personal na mga activities. When well, that is that is fine when that is personal activities. But um, when you actually go to work late, then that is already considered as an ethical conduct. All right. So that means um, that means that that simply means that these ethics is re really relevant. And what is um, more exciting about business ethics is that um, you could clearly use what are the um, you could use this no in the future when you will be working na. All right. So this business ethics. All right, can be explained into two different approaches. So number one is your consequ consequentialism or consequentialist approach. So a consequentialist approach to ethics or also termed as teleological approach is to take the view that the correctness or rightness of an action depends on its outcome. All right, a consequentialist approach to business ethics is common. Many businessmen who regard themselves as ethical individuals will take the view that rightness of an action can often be judged by the moral benefits that it will bring. So that means consequ consequentialist approach, it is an ethical theory that judges whether or not something is right by what is the consequence are. All right. For example, a deontological approach to ethics might be that it is wrong to take away a job from a worker who has worked well and shown loyalty to the company. It is difficult to take this approach when the company is losing money and will become insolvent unless it takes a measure to cut losses, including making some employees redundant. So a consequentialist approach would be that although it is unpleasant to make employees redundant, this might be the right thing to do in order to keep the business in existence, providing work to the employees who remain. So that means consequentialist approach, it determines whether the act or the the act is right or not, depending on the consequence of the action. So in that case, um under consequentialist approach, it could be right to, to remove employees or to lay off employees at some point when that is the strategic, na strategic action to be done by the corporation in order for a corporation not to be fully bankrupt or insolvent. All right. So although um, it's it's really wrong, for example, it's really wrong for you to lay off employees without any valid reason. But in this case, the consequence of not lay offing your or not removing your employees in terms of um, um, in terms of crisis in a corporation would somehow affect the entire operation of the corporation. So in that sense, removing your employees, um, having your employees lay, laid off could be considered as a right thing under consequentialist approach. Okay, so another approach of business ethics is your deontological approach. So a deontological approach to ethics is associated with, with the ideas of 18th century philosopher Kant. This approach takes the view that certain actions are ethically right and others are wrong. It is the action itself that makes it ethical or unethical, not the consequences of the action. So unlike earlier, the consequentialist approach, it is the consequence that determines whether the action is um, valid or not, or ethical or unethical. But in the ontological approach, it is the action itself, not the consequence, who will determine whether the action itself is unethical or not. So this view can be simplified into a statement that it is the means that is more important than the result or ends. Or if it is not ethical, then the means can never justify the end. So again, to simply 
um, explain the concept of deontological approach. Deontological approach um, simply considers the end does not justify the means. So that means if the means, the process is illegal and unethical, then therefore the end will always be illegal and unethical, therefore non-justifiable. All right? So um, the ontology or rule-based ethics focuses on duty and the ethical principles derived from generally accepted rules which guide actions. So that simply means even if your um, end, no, the result is um, beneficial, but as long as the process or the mechanism used in achieving that outcome is unethical, then therefore the action will really be tagged as unethical conduct. All right? So those are the two important approaches in ethics. We have your consequentialist approach and the deontological approach. Consequentialist approach refers to um, determining an action whether unethical or not based on um, the consequence of an action, while the ontological approach refers to an approach where it's the action, no, it's the means that really explains or determines whether such action is ethical or not. So in there are commonly used ethical decision making models in accounting and professional context context. We have two. Letter A is the American Accounting Association model and the second one is the Tucker's five question model. So let us assess first the American Accounting Association model. So the American Accounting Association or AAA developed a model for ethical decision making in 1990. So it's actually a model wherein it would help us to determine whether such action no, is desirable to be ethical or not. So this American Accounting Association model is based on teleological approach. Again, guys, this teleological approach is um, the same with your consequentialist approach where it is the consequence that um, that determines whether the action is ethical or not. Or in short, the according to consequentialist approach, the end justifies the means. Pero sa teleological, the end does not justify the means. Pero focus muna tayo dito kay American Accounting Association model. Again, it is based on teleological approach or the consequentialist approach. And it is based on a seven-step approach to decision-making. So we have there seven steps. First one, or the first question to ask is, what are the facts? Now, what are the facts? It is important to establish all the relevant facts. It is difficult to make a correct decision without having a clear understanding of facts. So before you make decisions, you assess facts first. No? That could be true because at some point, when we create decisions that is based on emotion, then possibly that the, the outcome will really be influenced, influenced on your um, feelings, not on facts. What are the ethical issues? So the decision maker should identify what moral issues are involved, if, if there's any, and what is the moral dilemma or what is the problem that is um, trying to be solved in that issue. All right. What moral principles, values, or norms are relevant to the decision? So the decision maker should consider the ethical principles or values that ought to be considered in reaching the decision. So for example, you are to create a decision and there is a dilemma, um, there is a um, there is um, a problem whether to pursue or not to pursue, whether it's a yes or a no or what. No? So you need to consider what are the code of conduct that is to be observed or the relevant norms values or principles that should be observed in making a particular decision. So that means um, this model simply um, reminds us that we should not create decisions right away, but we should create decision no, after um, thorough process and due process and with considerations of um, the respected principles, values, or norms. No? And number four, what are the alternative courses of action for the decision maker? 
and which course of action seems best because it is consistent with the moral, pr moral principles and values identified in step 3. So each course of action should be assessed according to whether it is morally correct. So each choice is judged based or against the principles and values that should be applied in the case. So to solve a particular problem, there could be several alternative courses of action that you could choose among. But take note that um, it is not always the money that determines which alternative course of action will be chosen, but you should also choose a decision that will not violate a particular set of principle, values, or norms in terms of ethics. All right. So what are the consequences of each possible courses of action? And lastly, to determine the decision. So the decision maker makes an ethical choice. So before we could create an ethical choice, there are a series of aspects that we need to consider. Number one, we need to consider facts. What are the, uh, what are the ethical issues present? No? And what are the specific principles, values, or norms? So this particular set of principles, values, or norms is very important because it will determine the type of decision we will make in the future. Okay? Because we could just simply make right away a decision. But what makes a decision ethical is a decision that is drawn based on and based on moral principles, values, or norms. Okay? Another model is actually from Tucker's five question model. So in using this model, the before you could create a decision, you need to ask the following five questions. So number one, is it profitable? No? Is the investment going to enable the company to make superior return than the alternatives? So obviously, no, in management accounting, when we do um, decision-making in terms of best alternative courses of action, what is the best alternative course of action is always the, the option that will give us the highest return. However, however, it's not the only question that we need to answer. Second question is... Is it legal? Although it gives you the best return, but is it legal in the first place? Because if it's not legal, if it's illegal in the, on the other hand, it's a big no-no. So need to make sure that the investment to be made is legal in the country where the investment will be made. All right? And number three, is it fair? Is the investment going to be fair? Not only the company, but other stakeholders as well. And is it right? Meaning, here you have to do an ethical assessment of the investment. And is it sustainable or environmentally sound? No? Does it hurt the environment? No? Whether if you would choose this alternative, yes, it is profitable, yes, it is legal, it is fair, it is right, but it will degrade, no? it will uh, kill the environment. So obviously, that will make your action still unethical. So, that means these actions or these questions should be answered by yes before creating a decision which can be pursued in a corporate setup. Alright? Okay. So, this time, let's proceed with the approaches to ethics and social responsibility. So, there are seven approaches to ethics and social responsibility. So, number one, the pristine capitalist. Pristine capitalists believe in the capitalistic system. It believes that capitalism is the best method for allocation of property. So it believes in max shareholder and maximization of shareholders' wealth. Companies seek to make profits and seek economic efficiency. Business has no responsibility to others other than to its own shareholders. So speaking of um, pristine capitalists, um, the only mindset in this approach is to maximize the wealth of the shareholders, no? notwithstanding um, possible violation of um, rules and regulations of any other stakeholders. Okay? Another is expedients still believe in the above liberal economic democracies, accepting that inequalities do happen. Therefore, businesses have to accept some governmental action to minimize inequalities. It argues that in the long run, social legislation may actually be in the business best 
interest. So in expedience, there is um, acknowledgement of the government um, government action to uh, minimize inequalities or to to encourage um, harmonious na coexistence of different stakeholders. Number three is your social contract position. Social contract position takes the expedient viewpoint and takes it a step further in saying that companies are given a license to operate. They can operate as long as they deserve the license. So that means if they have violated something, then their license to operate can be revoked. Okay, so that is social contract possession. So there can now be consideration of the actions of a corporation to continue its operation. So from from a very democratic na, na operation of an entity, then they will now uh, tend to follow specific rules and regulations in order for them to continue operating because if they somehow violated some rules and regulations, then there is a chance that their operation, that their license to operate can be revoked. Another is social ecologists. Social ecologists, they take the social contract position a step further in stating that companies should do everything they can to minimize the harm. All right? They do to the environment. So companies adopt environmentally friendly positions not because they have to, but because it is their responsibility to do so. So from pristine capitalists, which is um, no heart at all with other stakeholders, up to making sure that the environment is really safe. No? That is the focus of social ecologists. Companies adopt environmentally friendly positions not because they have to, but they are obliged to do so since this that is already their responsibility. Okay? Another is socialist. They believe that there is a class struggle between businesses and workers. So socialists believe that there has to be a redistribution of wealth. Another is radical feminist. Radical feminists, they argue that society and business are based on values that are usually considered masculine in nature, such as aggression, power assertiveness, hierarchy, domination, and competitiveness. They argue that it is these traits that got the world be in such a mess. So they believe it would be better if society were based on a feminine traits, such as equality, dialogue, compassion, fairness, and mercy. So this radical feminist is somehow really feminist in a sense that they, um, they encourage to be more um, accommodating with different thoughts, to provide equality, and to provide open dialogue, open communication with different stakeholders to promote compassion, fairness, and mercy. All right. So those are the seven approaches to ethics and social responsibility. Okay. Now this time let's proceed naman guys with other constructions of corporate and personal ethical stance. So there are, there are four possible ethical stances for a business entity. So first is short-term shareholder interest. So this approach is where the company complies with all legal requirements but do not undertake any demands that might impact short-term profitability. The second ethical stance is that long-term shareholders interest. So there are two reasons why an organization might take a wider view of ethical responsibilities when considering the long-term interest of the shareholder. So number one, the organizational corporate image may be enhanced by an assumption of wider responsibilities. And number two, the responsible exercise of corporate power to prevent the buildup of social and or political pressure for several regulation or political pressure for legal regulation. So freedom of action may be preserved and the burden of regulation lightened by acceptance of ethical responsibilities. So the third one is multiply stakeholders' interest. So multiply stakeholder 
interest or multiply stakeholder obligations, the organization accepts the legitimacy of the claims or expectations of certain stakeholders like shareholders, suppliers, and customers without these relationships the organization could not function. So this is a stance of business ethics where it would um, um, open their lines with all other stakeholders and considering that it is not the corporation alone who can um, make the corporation success, but it's actually a um, an effort no, with other stakeholders like the shareholders, suppliers, and the customers. And lastly, the shapers of society. So this means changing conditions in society and altering the way that society operates and perceives itself. The media has been recognized as an important shaper of the, so of the society. So obviously, media um, really plays a very important role in, in having ethical consideration for a corporation. Because take note, um, it might break or make a particular corporation depending on how they would be, uh, how, how they would look like in, in the lenses of different medias. Okay, so this time, guys, let us proceed with the professions and the public interest. So, um, profession has to do with the nature of individuals' work. So, for example, if you are an accountant, then you would probably have to belong to a particular professional organization like ACA, uh, ACA, ICPA, C CIMA, or in the Philippines, the Philippines, Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountant, which intends to promote the work that you do. So professions are organized groups of highly skilled individuals and organized by self-regulating bodies. So this type of um, professional body um, also have their sets of um, code of conduct no? that is followed, that is ought to be followed by the members of this professional body. Professionalism means actions that bring, no? that bring discredit on, avoiding actions that bring discredit on the accountancy profession. Now take note guys, once you become a certified public accountant in the future, you will take your oath to make sure um, that you will help the profession no, to become bountiful and no, not bountiful in terms of money but bountiful in terms of the activities that could help promote the function of the certified public accountants. No? One of that activities is actually not to bring discredit to the accountancy profession or in short, not to bring any stains to the accountancy profession. So, Meaning, as much as possible, we take good care of our profession, we take good care of our work. Alright? Another is professional behavior imposes an obligation on professional accountants to comply with relevant laws and regulations and avoid any action that may bring discredit to the profession. So, public interest is considered to be collective well-being of the community of people and institutions. So, the professional accountant serves including clients, lenders, governments, employers, employees, invest, investors, the business, and the financial community, and others who rely on the work of a professional accountant. So again, as mentioned in um, the functions of an external auditor, we actually help maintain and secure public interest. Thus, we are expected by the different stakeholders, primarily the public, to do really our job. So therefore, the profession has their specific code of conduct, principles, and standards that is really there to be followed for a particular profession. So our in our case, we have the PICPA in the Philippines who promulgates the rules and regulations and the conduct of a certified public accountant. And take note, guys, that our license to practice accountancy in the Philippines might be revoked, no? if we will violate the code of conduct of the accountancy profession in the Philippines. So the BOA or the, prof the PRC can revoke our license. Accountants should act in the public's interest. No, There is no clear definition of what is the public interest, but in the public interest is usually associated with matters such as, number one, detecting and reporting any 
any serious crime. So, although, for example, in the course of our external audit conduct, it is not our primary responsibility to detect fraud, but if there are frauds along the way which was detected or which were detected by the auditor, then we should make sure that um, these um, fraud are properly taken care of and reported to um, to specific na right group of people or person. Another is protecting health and public safety. No? Preventing the public from being misled by a statement or action by an individual or an organization. Exposing the misuse of public funds and corruption in government. So, uh, in preventing the public from being misled, don't, then therefore, that's the, the, the really main job of the external auditor to really consider whether the financial statements no, are fairly stated or fairly, state, uh, fairly presented by the accountants of the corporation in order na dili ma misled ang whoever will read that financial statement. Another is exposing the misuse of public funds and corruption in the government. So that is why we have the Commission on Audit, the accountants who works in the government sector. So it is their job to really make sure that the public funds are used accordingly for the general public's interest. And revealing the existence of any conflict of interest of those individuals who are in a position or power or influence. Okay? So... These are the content on content of and principles behind the professional code of ethics. So the content of a corporate code of ethics is normally quite short, dealing with each point in just a few sentences. So and sometimes in just one sentence. So typical code contains general statement about ethical conduct of an employee, specific reference to the company's dealings with, with each stakeholder group, such as employees, customers, shareholders, and local communities. And it might contain statements about values of the company such as acting with integrity at all times, protecting the environment, and pursuit of excellence. And lastly, the respect for the individual. Now, although specific professional code of conduct of different profession or um, policy, corporate policy may be worded differently, but it generally contains the same thought which is to as much as possible maintain ethical conduct for all the employees no there should be a specific reference to the company's dealings they are not doing it for themselves but they are doing it for the entire stakeholders of the corporation and as much as possible acting with integrity at all times protecting the environment Environment will always be included in the picture, in the pursuit of excellence. You do everything as if that's your last na job or you do everything at your best. And lastly, respect for all individual involved. Okay, so this time guys, proceed naman tayo sa um, fundamental principles. No, There are several fundamental principles that is included in the conduct of business ethics. So primarily, we have number one, your objectivity. So objectivity, objectivity members should be unbiased and impartial when providing business services. This means that members should not allow bias, conflict of interest, or undue influence of others to override professional or business judgment. So that means um, we should not choose who... who we are to serve, no? Everyone are welcome, and we should always consider the presence of respect among others. Number two is professional competence in due care. This is where members have to have the skill and knowledge to do his or her job, so the client has to feel comfortable with the services being provided. So obviously, guys, um, we are invited. We are not actually invited, but we are we became member of the profession the accounting profession the certified public accounting accountant profession in the philippines because of our competence because if we are not competent if you are not competent you will not be um listed in the roster of certified public accountants in the philippines so therefore as much as um possible we should do our job with utmost competence no um we should Again, make sure that our skills are at max 
and our knowledge are always updated to make sure that we provide the best service to our clients. Another is professional behavior. Professional behavior members have to comply with all laws and regulations and should avoid any action that discredits the profession. So professional behavior, so you really need to follow what are the specific rules and regulations in the profession. And then integrity at all times. No? Members should be straightforward and honest in all business and professional relationship and avoid possible um, conflict of interest. So integrity, take note that Again, it's not easy to become a certified public accountant. Therefore, we should, um, as much as possible, take good care of our profession no? and become integ man of integrity at all times. And then, number five is your confidentiality. Members have a responsibility to respect the confidentiality of information acquired as a result of professional and business relationships and should not disclose any such information to third parties without proper or specific authority or unless there are legal or professional right or duty to disclose. So again, we should do our job with utmost confidentiality as well. We should not divulge um, important information to third parties which we are not allowed to disclose. We are only allowed to disclose when number one, it the, the, the law requires us to do so or if there is a subpoena from court, that requires us to disclose. And number two, we are to disclose when our job or um, our, our decision or our opinion as an accountant or an external auditor is being challenged on why you have come up with that opinion or so what. No, you can disclose your opinion to, uh, you can disclose your um, important na mga data in order for you to back up your opinion. And lastly, guys, these are the code of ethics relevant to the accounting profession, such as IFAC or PICPA, which is the professional ba, uh, which is the mother profession organizational profession professional organization of the accountancy profession in the Philippines. So there are fundamental principles, including technical standards. So on technical standards, the accountant must perform his or her job with relevant technical and professional standards. Technical and professional standards would include standards issued by different um, governing um, entities like PICPA or IFAC or similar national regulatory board. Financial reporting standards, we prepare financial statements based on existing standards like US GAAP. IFRS or PFRS in our part in the Philippines or any standards and regulations of the members professional accountancy body and relevant legislation like the Surbanis Oxley, foreign corrupt practices, um, any other um, existing rules and regulations in the Philippines, for example, AMLA, um, data privacy, among others. Okay, in we should make sure that in discharging our job as an accountant or as an auditor, we are observant with the rules and regulation, particularly the law of the land and the standards that is governing our profession. And then objectivity. So objectivity, this means being unbiased and impartial, not having any conflict of interest issues. This also means not having undue pressure from others. For example, management wants the accountant to modify an engagement report because the conclusion is unpopular. So we should that uh, we should avoid that activity, no? If it's really qualified, then really we issue qualified opinion. If they deserve an unqualified opinion, then we'll give them unqualified opinion. We should not be influenced by whatever pressure there could be. Another letter C is the professional competence in due care. Accountants need to be competent in the work they do. This means they have the necessary skills and knowledge to perform their duties should strive to improve and stay on top of what is going on in the profession. So as what I have as what I always think guys no if you really become an accountant you should really be competent enough. Not competent with towards others but competent with yourself. No you should be competitive with yourself 
you should not be competitive not just on others but you should be competitive with also within yourself because it's a fact that when you become a certified public accountant you are competent but doesn't um being competent doesn't end after passing the cpa board after having your cpa license but um being competent is a long life process just like education because being competent should be done at all the course of your work. So therefore, it doesn't end. So your education should not end at the end of the board exam or after passing the CPA board exam. So you should consider um, continuing professional development. And letter D, professional behavior. Professional behavior accountants are required to observe relevant laws and regulations it was already mentioned earlier to avoid any actions that would discredit the accountancy profession this requirement covers advertising by accountants which must be truthful and must disparage the services provided by rival firms so we are not actually allowed not to badmouth our our brothers and sisters in the profession and letter E, your integrity, always requirement of fair dealing. The accountants need to be straightforward, honest, and truthful. This means that the accountant should not supply any information which could, which could be misleading, false, or deceptive. Example, the accountant will not modify report unless factual errors are known to exist. No? You should not modify a report just because you are told to do so. There you should only modify it if it will give the updated version fairness to whoever magreed ng financial statement. And lastly, confidentiality. The need to respect the confidentiality of information obtained during your work. Information may not be used to enrich oneself. Okay, You should not use um, information of your clients to benefit yourself. Okay, so our, I know guys, our topic, business ethics, is really more on um, the code of conduct, the expected code of conduct that we are, um, we need to observe when you are already working in the future. So again, um, these ethical conducts are just guides. What is very important is we know how to develop the inner values in ourselves because if we value what is really good and not then even if it's not at work even if um it's on our day-to-day -day living ethical conduct will really be followed no if we always do everything religiously based on the books no what is on the books then um, having an ethical decision will follow. Okay, so I encourage everyone to develop this um, the spirit of, you know, the having good values, no? Not just in work, but in our day-to-day -day living. Because if we are used to do good deeds, then even if it's not at work, no, it is ano na innate na sa ato ang ang magconduct o ethical na mga activities thus to avoid an ethical conducts okay so those are the items that we need to consider in business ethics so again business ethics are guided by some principles what we need to become ethical in in work is to follow this um, set of conduct no? prescribed by the organization, by the corporation, or even the profession where we belong. Example, by the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants or PICPA. Okay? So I think that's the end of our lecture for business ethics. If you have more concerns, voluntary acts, or additional inputs, please um, take note of it properly and share it during our virtual class. Thank you and God bless.